remember that every planetary energy is a teaching tool and a potential doorway to freedom and liberation from that which binds us to our limited physical self. And why am I saying so? Because I'm going to talk about a very deep, deep house that is the secretive most house, eighth house, which is misunderstood many a times. And I want to clarify a few things about that house. Never forget that Rahu and Ketu play the most important role in our spiritual development. When we lose our body, that is Rahu, and our head, when that is Ketu, that is what the mysticism is enlightening. This metamorphosis is the classic example of transformation. The eighth house stuff. We always misunderstand that transformation is like, okay, changing yourself. But transformation is profound, fundamental change, altering the nature, the very nature of something. Transformational change is both radical and sustainable. Something that is transformed can never go back to exactly what it was before. You know, Albert Einstein has two planets. He had two planets in the eighth house. He once said the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again and expecting different results. So much of eighth house energy. We can see the variations of these dynamics within labor unions, social justice, women's environment, LGBT indigenous groups, foundations and other intermediaries and from the grassroots groups to our country's largest social change institutions. Here's another example of Nelson Mandela. Once he invited Botha, the previous president who had jailed him to share the stage at the Independence Day celebration. Years later, Bill Clinton asked him, tell me the truth. Weren't you angry all over again? Mandela answered, yes, I was angry. And I was a little afraid. After all, I had been free so long. But he said, when I felt that anger well up inside of me, I realized that if I hated them after I got outside the gate, then they would still have me. And he smiled and said, I wanted to be free, so I let it go. Emotional triggering. This is when events in the present restimulate past pain, fear or anger out, out of proportion to what's actually happening in the present. That's what is Nelson Mandela and Albert Einstein about. That's the eighth house energy. The product of millennia of evolution get hijacked by our own limbic systems. That we have to control, that we have to see, how we can tame that. All human beings carry woundings from our past pattern responses embedded in our brains and nervous systems. Shocking numbers of us have experienced sexual, physical, or emotional abuse. Many of us have been victimized or traumatized by oppression due to race, gender, sexual orientation, or differ differing abilities. Even those from privileged backgrounds and relatively healthy families often carry wounds of loss, anxiety, over self-worth and fear of failure. Again and again, we see how these emotional wounds play out at work. A leader with positional power lashes out abusively at staff. Discussions over budget start to feel like life and death struggles. Differences over strategy become personally threatening to the point where dialogue and a search for common ground become impossible. 
Isn't that the eighth house energy? Yes. That is what is transformation. We have to change. And change not to go back to that same rut. There are some leaders who have actually put in, you know, spiritually infused activism. They've actually transformed and tried to transform in the social, uh, greatly social changes. Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr. Dorothy Day, Nelson Mandela. These are the leaders who helped found, how, how they helped found, have, have uh, drawn deeply from well of spirituality. Their greatness and their brilliance cannot be forgotten. They also had very strong eight houses, by the way. So why am I discussing this today with you? Why this kind of a discussion about eighth house? See, whatever is happening around us, it's really pain, painful to see at times. Are we really changing towards better human beings? That is something which pushed me to that really, actually I wanted to make this video from a long, long time. But, you know, I was just thinking, what, how should I go about it? Maybe people will not be receptive to this video. Maybe you will think that why, you know, she's just lecturing us. Could be, isn't it? But yes, I want to make it an astrological video. So I will be telling you in the second part that what 8th house is all about and what happens when the planets are placed in the 8th house. So different planets in the 8th house. Let's see what the result is going to be. So stay tuned and stay blessed everyone for the next part. Om Tatsat.